Okay, so welcome back. In this part of the tutorial series, we are going to be allowing the user to upload a profile picture. Uh, this profile picture is going to be stored in their user uh, account, if you like, in the database, or the location to the file that they've uploaded will be. Uh, what's then going to happen is this is going to be accessible um, to be displayed anywhere. So this can be displayed on their profile page. It can be displayed to them. We're obviously going to be showing um, a sh small preview of the profile picture that's been uploaded just here. And of course, uh, it goes without saying that we're going to be creating the functionality to pick a file, uh, check this file's type securely, um, so we you know don't allow dodgy files to be uploaded. And then we're going to be um, allowing them to upload this. So the first thing I think to do here is to actually modify the database table to allow a location to a file to be stored and this is really important because it allows us to uh, specify where this file should be um, or which file should be shown uh, so this means that we're not storing images within our database or anything like that so what we're we doing here well we've got all our fields at the moment Let's go over to the structure tab and we'll add a new field at the end of the table. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this profile and the type I'm going to set to a varchar uh, and we'll give it a character length of 55. Now this might uh, be longer depending on where you're storing the uh, images on your, uh, on your server but you can adjust this accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. You can see that we've got this here. Now obviously in browse at the moment these are blank for everyone. Uh, the default value here is just nothing. So we can use this to check if this is empty. Now if it is empty, we can you know, not show a, a profile image or we can prompt the user to upload one. And obviously if it has contents, this will be the path, uh, the relative path to the file. So then we can just display the profile picture. So um, I've opened the three files here that we need to edit. But the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and open up um, the um, core of our project and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it images and inside here I'm going to create a new folder and call it uh, profile now it's important that we don't allow access to this profile by the way this is going to be where all of the images are going to be stored for every single user now we want to make sure that we don't allow allow sort of browsing access through a browser to this so we're going to go ahead and create a new file this is going to be an HT access file which we save much like we did for uh, let's just go back here much like we did for this so it's a dot HT access file and basically this is just going to um, uh, specify or tell um, the server that this directory should not be listed the files in this directory should not be listed. So all we have to do for this is options minus indexes. Uh, and we'll go ahead and save this obviously in images and profile. I'm going to save this as a .ht access document. And there we are, we're done. So now if we open up our browser and go over to images, this, this allows us to browse because we have um, we don't have an HT access file in here specifying that we can't browse. If we go into profile though, we've got this access forbidden message. And the only way that a user or a, a, a browser of the site will be able to um, check for images in here is, or, or display images or access images, is whether they type, you know, if they type in the, um, the image location or the file name. And we're gonna be hashing the um, current time so this will always be different. Um, so, you know, a user can't necessarily guess this. They might be able to, but, you know, you can be inventive and think of ways that people might not be able to guess this. Anyway, let's go on with the actually developing the functionality. We've got our database set up ready to go here. All we need to do is develop the upload functionality and the ability to display this out. So in init.php, we already know that we've got this user data variable that holds the field that we want to retrieve from this specific user if they're logged in. Now we've got a new field that we need to access called profile. So let's go ahead and add that to the array that we passed through, uh, or the field, sorry, that we passed through uh, to this function. 
So now we have access to this profile um, data. So over in loggedin.php, which is within the widgets folder, so essentially this is what displays here, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, create a little area here. So I'm going to create a new div. And I'm going to give it the class of profile. We might actually need to go into the style sheet as well and add some styles um, just to make this look a bit neater. Now I'm just going to go ahead and test this out. So to test, I'm going to say echo user data and then profile. So at the moment, you may already guess that this isn't going to display anything. So I refresh the page, nothing's being displayed. However, um, obviously I'm logged in as Alex. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this. Let's go ahead and add in, uh, just write test here for now. Go ahead and click go. Here, when we refresh, we get this test value out. So we know that if this is the path to an image, or it's going to be the path to an image, uh, let me just go ahead and modify this, get rid of this here. So if it's the path to an image, what's going to happen is um, we can put this inside an image element. But we need a couple of conditions first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an opening and a closing PHP tag. And I'm going to say if empty is equal to false. So if something is empty, and this is user data profile. In fact, I'm going to say if it's not uh, false, then we echo and we echo an image tag here or an image element and we need to give it an alt as well. So we've got the two required attributes for this. Inside of here, we're going to place user data profile. So that will include that in the source. And the alt is just going to be X's, um, let's just escape that character, X's uh, profile image. So X is obviously going to be the user. And we already know how to access that information. We've got it up here. So that's user data first name. So we can go ahead and just plonk that in there. There we go. So head over to here and refresh. Um, it looks as though this has appeared. And in fact, let's go ahead and inspect this. Image source. Hmm. Let's go ahead and look at the code. Oh, sorry, no, it'll be, um, let's just get rid of that. It will be, uh, is equal to false. Sorry, it's, I'm confusing my logic completely. So if it, um, if the profile is not empty, then we display it. If it is empty, we don't display anything. Okay, so we've done that. Once we've uploaded a profile picture, this will display. What we want to do down here is go ahead and, and give the user the option to browse. So I'm doing this here just because it's easier for the user to access, but you know you can go ahead and do this in settings as well, in the settings page if you, if you wish. So the input type here is gonna be a file. We need to give this a name as well. And I'm just gonna call this profile. And then I'm also going to include an input field and um, this is just going to be a submit button now obviously we need to wrap this in a form so let me just go ahead and indent that so we've got an action and we've got a method and because we're uploading an image we need an ink type as well and this is going to be multi part slash form data just means that we're transferring a specific uh, type of data over here um, we can access images and, and process the image and the method here is going to be post doesn't need to be capitals and the actions going to be blank because we're going to be posting this back to the same page so if we go ahead and just quickly preview this you'll see we've got this it looks a little messy so we're going to add some styles in just a moment uh, in fact we'll go ahead and do that now so if we go ahead and open up uh, the CSS folder and screen let's scroll down to a place that makes sense so perhaps um, just after a side we'll say dot profile and we will give this a background 
of f9, 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 and we'll give this a border of 1px. Uh, we'll make it dashed and aaa or ccc. So that looks like that. So a little bit better. Let's just go ahead and give it some inner padding. 10 pixel might be too much. There we go. So um, this is to upload a profile picture. You can, you know, go ahead and head, add some header in here. I'm not going to bother just for now. Let's just minimize or make this a bit smaller. Okay, so um, now what we can do is choose a file. This will allow us to choose a file. I've got a file here ready to be uploaded. It's a PNG file. We're going to be accepting PNGs, JPEGs, and uh, GIFs, I guess. Uh, you can choose which uh, image files to accept, but I probably think bitmaps are a bit too large in file size, most likely. So we're going to be selecting this image. We're going to be clicking Submit. That's posted back to the same page. And then just above here, we're going to be processing this in the code. Now, we'll do all the relevant security checks, check that it's the right file type. Um, and then if it is, we'll go ahead and upload the file, place that in the correct directory, and then we'll go ahead and update the database. And that what that will do is then the picture, the profile picture will automatically appear. So in the next part, we'll look at uh, tying this all together and actually allowing the user to upload the profile picture.